Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Happy Sunday. Happy Sunday. Um, today, our praise and worship song is called is titled "Heart of Worship," and um, I think it's just a good way to kind of meditate on, um, you know, our the busyness of our lives, and just um, despite the many songs we sing, or no matter how many times that we find other means of worship, Jesus is always the number one center and um, the reason. So um, if you'd like to join me or just meditate on the song, please feel free to. When the music fades, all is stripped away and I simply come longing just to bring something that's of worth that will bless your heart I'll bring you more than a song for a song in itself is not what you have required you search much deeper within through the way things appear you're looking into my heart i'm coming back to the heart of worship and it's all about you it's all about you jesus i'm sorry lord for the thing i made it when it's all about you it's all about you jesus king of endless worth King of endless worth, no one could express how much you deserve. Though I'm weak and poor, all I have is yours. Every single breath, I'll give you more than a song. I'll bring you more than a song For a song in itself Is not what you have required You search much deeper within Through the way things appear You're looking into my heart I'm coming back to the heart of worship and it's all about you it's all about you jesus i'm sorry lord for the thing i made it when it's all about you it's all about you let's sing that again I'm coming back to the heart of worship and it's all about you it's all about you Jesus I'm sorry Lord for the thing I made it when it's all about you yes it's all about you Jesus It's all about you, Jesus. Let us pray, please. Lord, we thank you for bringing us here today on this wonderful, beautiful spring day. And we know that nothing is an accident. We are all meant to be here despite our very busy schedules. Lord, we, we thank you for all the blessings you've given us, for the wonderful weather, for the community that we've built within our church, within each other, Lord. And we, we thank you and we want to praise you all the time and 
and despite that we we find other means of worshiping you or or find other earthly mundane things that find pleasure we we want to constantly remember that it's all about you lord god and we love you so much you are the center of our hearts the center of our faith the center of all our relationships and all we do lord and we just want to pray that everything we do everyone we encounter that they see they see you in us lord god and then we thank you for for our community we thank you for our church and we just pray for the constant revival and our growth in each other and in you lord god and in this name we pray Good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning to those worshiping in person with us, uh, those on Facebook Live, and those on Zoom. So let's see. Happy Haitian Pacific American Heritage Month. That's, that's the month of May. Uh, more church announcements. Pastor Don's Bible study continues on Facebook weekly. We have our treasure shop Saturdays from 10 a.m. until 1 p.m. Um, and our children and youth hangout on Fridays um, at 6 p.m. We have our ESL classes held on Monday and Thursdays at 6.30 p.m. This Sunday, today uh, in the afternoon, Trinity United Methodist Church is inviting the youth group between uh, 3 and 6 p.m. May 11th, Thursday, the United Methodist Women will have fellowship um, at 11 a.m. at Fellowship Hall. On the 13th, we have our bake sale from 10 a.m. until 1 p.m. Any donations will be gracious, graciously accepted. Uh, May 14th, uh, next Sunday, is Mother's Day. We will have a um, special, uh, special music going on that day, so I'm looking forward to that. On May 18th, uh, Thursday, we have our community care pantry. On the 20th, uh, Saturday, is the Kenilworth Historical Society um, that will be held at the VFW here um, in Kenilworth in the Kennedy Room at 12.30 p.m. On the 21st, uh, we'll have our street fair um, on the boulevard between 10 a.m. and 4 p.m. Um, there may be some difficulty getting to church um, on the 21st, um, so just be prepared for that. Um, uh, the 21st through the 23rd, we have our annual conference uh, that will be held in Wildwood. On May 25th, uh, Thursday, um, our team will be putting the circuit rider together at 11 a.m. And May 28th is Pentecost Sunday. Let's see, birthdays coming up uh, this week is Tony. Happy birthday, Tony. She'll be celebrating that tomorrow. Does anyone have anything they'd like to share this morning? Okay, everyone is invited downstairs to, to celebrate Tony's birthday. Thank you. Uh, anyone else have anything they'd like to share? Yes. Prayers for Mary Ellen's cousin. Yes, Elaine. Oh, I'm sorry. Wait, hold on, Bob. Bob's friend Joe. Cancer as well. Prayers for Joe. Okay, yes. Oh, your grandson's in the hospital yeah. with diverticulitis. Yeah. Adam. Okay, prayers for Adam. Anyone else have anything they'd like to share? Do we have children here? Yes? Jarrah? 
I can hear children's time. Okay, so you'll come up for children's time. Thank you, Jara. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, church. How is everyone? Okay. So today's lesson is about following Jesus, and he's the only way that we could come through God. Um, so today's scripture lesson is from John chapter 14, verses 1 through 14. Um, we're going to go around and read two verses each. I'll start. Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. My Father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I'm going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me so that you may also be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, <laughs> huh? five and six. All right. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really know me, you will know my Father as well. From now on, you do know him and I have seen him. Philip said, Lord, show us the Father, and that will be enough for us. Jesus answered, don't know me, Philip, even after I've been among you such a long time. Anyone has seen me as seen the Father. How could you say this? Show us the Father. Don't you believe that I am in the Father and that the Father is in me? The words I say to you, I do not speak on my own authority. Rather, it is the Father living in me who is doing his work. Believe me when I say that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, or at least believe on the evidence of the works themselves. Yeah. I'm reading on my mom's behalf. Um, Very truly, I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing, and they will do even greater things than these, because I am going to the Father, and I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. You may ask me for anything in my name, and I will do it. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you, guys. Okay. So I have an arrow, and I'm going to point it in whichever direction, and your head follows. Okay, ready? <laughs> and last one. Okay, good job, everybody. <laughs> so now that we all know how to follow direction, <laughs> Um, we should stop and imagine how Jesus' disciples felt in our Bible lesson today. Jesus knew that the day of his crucifixion was coming and that he would soon return to his Father in heaven. He was trying to, to 
prepare his disciples for the time when he would no longer be with them. Don't worry, Jesus said, I'm going to prepare a place for you. When everything is ready, I will come and get you so that you will be with me. You know the way to where I am going. Um, but the, sorry. Sometimes life can be very confusing and we don't know where to turn or what path to take. It seems that every path we take leads to a dead end. When that happens, we need to remember that Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If we keep our eyes on Jesus and follow his teaching, we will find the path to our goal, eternal life in heaven with him. We can only come to God through Jesus. Let us pray. Dear God, help us keep our eyes on Jesus because we know that he is the way, the only way to you. In Jesus' name, amen.
Please stand and join me in the call to worship. We seek the word of God, but may not hear the message. Help us to see the truth. With trust, we can all be instruments of God. Please remain standing if you are able for our opening hymn for a thousand tongues to sing. We will be sing singing verses one through five and seven, omitting verse number six. Let us pray. Eternal God, at times we let presumptions block us from seeing your gifts in other people. Change us by the power of your Holy Spirit. Renew our hearts. Open our spiritual eyes to see your greater purpose and potential in all persons. Walk beside us as we obey your call to encourage one another create space, and help each other to use our God-given gifts for your work in the world. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. The scripture lesson is taken from Acts chapter 9, Verses 1 through 22, it's Saul's conversation. Meanwhile, Saul was still breathing out murderous threats against the Lord's disciples. He went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues in Damascus, so that if he found any there who belonged to the way, whether men or women, he might take them as prisoners to Jerusalem. As he neared Damascus on his journey, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice say to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? 
Who are you, Lord? Saul asked. I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting, he replied. Now get up and go into the city, and you will be told what you must do. The men traveling with Saul stood there speechless. They heard the sound, but did not see anyone. Saul got up from the ground, but he opened his eyes. He could see nothing. So they led him by the hand into Damascus. For three days he was blind and did not eat or drink anything. In Damascus there was a disciple named Ananias. The Lord called to him in a vision, Ananias. Yes, Lord, he answered. The Lord told him, go to the house of Judas on Straight Street and ask for a man from Tarsus named Saul, for he is praying. In a vision, he has seen a man named Ananias come and place his hands on him to restore his sight. Lord, Ananias answered, I have heard many reports about this man and all the harm he has done to your holy people in Jerusalem. And he has come here with authority from the chief priests to arrest all who call on your name. But the Lord said to Ananias, Go. This man is my chosen instrument to proclaim my name to the Gentiles and their kings and to the people of Israel. I will show him how much he must suffer for my name. Then Ananias went to the house and entered it. Placing his hands on Saul, he said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road as you were coming here, has sent me so that you may see again and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Immediately, something like scales fell from Saul's eyes, and he could see again. He got up and was baptized, and after taking some food, he regained his strength. Saul spent several days with the disciples in Damascus. At once he began to preach in the synagogues that Jesus is the Son of God. All those who heard him were astonished and asked, Isn't he the man who raised havoc in Jerusalem? among those who call on this name? And hasn't he come here to take them as prisoners to the chief priests? Yet Saul grew more and more powerful and baffled the Jews living in Damascus by proving that Jesus is the Messiah. The word of the Lord. You may be seated. Thank you, Melissa. I just want to uh, let everybody know that Adrian, Adrian, please stand up, said that he wanted to be a member of this church family. <laughs> Thank you, Adrian. Uh, yes, we will have a membership class, and, and thank you. Thank you. And welcome, everybody. How are you? We want to pray by singing UMH 599. I need, there is Daniel. If not Daniel, maybe Miss Mel. Uh, UMH 599. Open your hymnal. Do you know, break down the bread of life. Miss Mel, lead us. No. <laughs> give, the, give the tune. Oh, Jeannie. Jeannie, can you lead us, please? I might break the mic if I start. <laughs>
transform us to be a better person, a better disciple who will follow you in Jesus' name. Amen. Today, our lesson is rising from hatred. And it is about the story of Saul from Tarsus who became Paul the Apostle. The scripture passage was from uh, what Melissa read, Acts 9, 1 to 22. Did you experience somebody hating you because of your faith? Have you hated somebody not because of what they did to you, but just because of their beliefs and principles? Hatred. Hatred is an intense negative emotional response towards certain people, things, or ideas, usually related to opposition or revulsion towards something. Hatred is often associated with intense feelings of anger, contempt, and disgust. Hatred is sometimes seen as the opposite of love. The important lessons last week about denial is three powerful ways Jesus meets us in times of denial. Jesus loves us in times of denial. In times of denial, Jesus forgives us and Jesus gives us direction. Our discussion this week is about rising from hatred. The story of Saul and Paul and three ways to rise up from hatred. Number one, do not judge. Number two, spend time in the dark. You will understand more later and see all people in Jesus' light. Number one, do not judge. We're going to study the life of Paul. Before Paul, he was known as Saul of Tarsus. He was born of the Jewish race and faith. He was a Pharisee educated under Gamaliel, one of Judaism's most esteemed teachers. Paul called himself a Hebrew of the Hebrews, as conscientious a Jew as it was possible to be. He was zealous of his faith, so zealous and fervent that he volunteered to go out and persecute the Christian believers. He certainly believed that they were enemies of the truth and did all he could to exterminate them, invading their homes, flogging them, dragging them to prison, having them tortured, even murdered like Stephen. Both Ananias and Saul believed themselves to be faithful and doing what they were supposed to be doing. They both refer to the voice speaking to them as Lord, connoting reverence towards something outside of themselves. It is sad that we spend too much time judging another person's faithfulness. Saul persecuted the faith of Christians because they did not believe like him. Ananias had preconceived ideas about Saul and wanted nothing to do with him at first. But God gets to decide who the instruments are going to be in God's bad and the party they are supposed to play. Hate is a virus. But it's not the root cause of 
feelings. It is judgment. We all judge. We are predisposed to this natural tendency. It is part of a human nature. But why do we judge? Thinking is difficult. That's why most people judge, said Swiss psychiatrist Carl Jung. This quote sums it all. Judging is easy and doesn't require much thinking or reasoning. Understanding is harder as it requires deep thinking, patience, compassion, and an open mind. So if we are lazy, it's easy to judge. Human behavior specialist Dr. John Demartini refers to his phenomenon, to this phenomenon, as self-righteous and self Wrong use. I didn't even know that there's a word like wrong use. Judging is simply our attempt to create a hierarchy of better done and less done. Superior to and inferior to. And to define worth everyone and everything that we meet. We have the innate, innate urge to be right, to be better, to be superior. Always. That is our human nature. Our binary view of the world around us necessitates us to be either right or wrong. So we tend to judge. And when we judge, hatred comes next. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. said, Returning hate for hate multiplies hate, adding deeper darkness to a night already devoid of stars. Darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only light can do that. Hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. Passing judgment on others is still a problem in the church. Isn't it? A pastor tells about a man who confronted him after church one day. Reverend, the man said, I have two complaints about you. Oh, I know who's complaining a lot. I'm not, I'm not saying, you. Why, are you thinking, why are you looking at me? <laughs> I have two complaints about you. What are they? The pastor asked. First, said the man, when I was the chairman of the board of trustees, you tried to tell me how to do the job. You should just let the church leaders do their job the way they want. What is the second complaint? Asked the pastor. Well, said the man, I don't like the hymns that the song leader picks out. I wish you would tell him to pick more of the old ones. <laughs> Obviously, the man was not aware of the mixed message. He wanted the pastor to refrain from telling lay people how to do their jobs, but he wanted the pastor to tell the song leader which songs to sing. People are amazing. <laughs> That's number one, and that is do not judge. Number two, spend time in darkness. What does that mean? Accepting sin and repenting. Have you ever get your picture taken by an old camera with a flash? And the flash practically blinds you. Ready? Psh! And you're left with blue luminous x-ray vision for the next few minutes. But without exposure to that blinding light and then time in the dark room, a photograph cannot emerge. No one thinks about that process anymore in our digital age. We press the button and voila, for the amateur photomaker, that's all there is to it. We have the picture. But if you are a true photographer, you understand the process behind the photo. When a photo is taken, first a negative is produced. But before its colors can be revealed, that negative must first be processed. The negative is light sensitive. 
it fir must first be plunged into the darkness and into a solution that will help to develop it. I just want to know if some children knows what a negative is. <laughs> because they might have not. Do you know what a negative is? No? Yes, very good case. I forgot your name already. <laughs> the negative is light sensitive. Okay, so you know how the negative works. It must be plunged into darkness and into a solution that will help to develop it. Kept for a while in the darkness, after the process is complete, the silver salts or scales are then washed away. And as the photo dries, the true image is revealed. In a sense, this is what Paul went through those days. In a blinding flash, Saul's instantaneous confrontation by the living and powerful Shekinah. Shekinah, meaning the light of God. Jesus blinds him to his past life. And for three days and nights, he is plunged into a dark room, the same darkness that jo Jonah must have felt as he languished in the belly of the fish. When he emerged to be baptized and mentored, he became a new creature. His sins were washed away along with his former ways of seeing, and new eyes had emerged. No longer was his soul persecutor of Christians, but the image revealed in Paul became the image of Christ. He said so in Galatians, For I have been crucified with Christ, and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I live, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Jesus the light had come into Saul's life and had revealed his true heart as well as his many sins, not the least being a coat rack for executioners of Jesus' own disciples. Jesus, the light of God's presence, had come into Saul's heart and had killed the darkness, the sin that had been encompassing Saul, and restored the soul that would be Paul, born into Christ. The light had come into the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. The light of salvation had won. From out of darkness is born light, the manifestation of God. From out of fear and shame is born resurrection life. From out of blindness is born new vision, new eyes, new hope, new person, the person of Jesus. In a divided world, hatred can bubble up in the hearts of those who seek to do good. The risen Christ moves us from a place of judgment to a place of connection so that we can work together for God's kingdom. In number two, it says, we should be in the dark. Spend some time in darkness. Spend some time Closing our eyes and looking our inner soul, our inner life. See all our sins and let God show us all the darkness that's inside us. And from that darkness, the light will shine. Number three. To rise up in hatred, we must see all people in Jesus' light. If you have ever been to an operating room, the most striking thing about the room is the brightness of the lights illuminating every corner of the space. The brighter the light, the better the surgeon can see to operate. Ever lose a button or a coin? What's the first thing you do? Get a flashlight. Try to shine the light into the cracks where the item may have dropped so that you can see to retrieve it. The brighter, the better. How many of you were reading glasses? One, two, three, four. 
like me can you put it off as long as you could as time went on the words of the page kept getting murkier and blurrier until the page looked like just a scramble of gray forms i couldn't even read on a napkin but in the absence of reading glasses the more light you shine on the page the easier it is to pick out for the outlines of the letters let's say it together light makes things clearer again light makes things clearer light also reveals things you never knew were there just shine the brightest light you can on that table you haven't dusted in a while. Light reveals every smudge, every fingerprint, every spot you couldn't see was there until you shine the light directly on it. Oh! Oh! My goodness, there's oil. Fingerprint. Light makes clear not only what you want to see, but also what you may not want to see or what you didn't even realize was lurking there. It is amazing how light can cure some eye problems. I have a prism eyeglasses, just like Hillary Clinton. That's Hillary. Hillary has prism. Look at the glasses. Cannot find my one, two, three. Hillary. Light makes clear not only what you want to see, but also what you may not want to see. A prism added to eyeglasses. This is prism glasses. A prism added to eyeglasses bends light before it travels through the eye my golly that's very good how light and can be bent the light is redirected to the right place on the retina in each eye the brain then fuses the two images together to produce one clear picture how amazing is that how amazing, you know? That is why I have prism because sometimes I see double. And um, sometimes it's good to see double because if we are 20, then we are 40. But it's hard when I read. When Paul experienced the resurrected Christ, he saw people not as enemies, but as brothers and sisters in Christ. He connected with them. He saw the truth and even for his people, the Hebrews, to be saved. He carried the message of the gospel to the ends of this world. Crossing mountains, seas, deserts, he confronted adversity, persecution, affliction, opposition, misunderstanding, imprisonment, unbelievable hardship, and imaginable hostility, changing appointment, and having a different pastor, he was driven out of church after church and city after city. I hope you're not driving me out of the church because uh, <laughs> yet he was a man who for the sake of the gospel and in order to win people to Jesus was willing to endure anything, literally. Paul saw the people as the God's people, and Paul see all the people. Like the Apostle Paul, may we see all the people Christ has called us to reach. May we see all the people. May we see all the people Christ has called us to reach in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Let us declare our faith through the Apostles' Creed in unison. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and seated at the right hand of the Father and will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. On the night in which Jesus gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, break the bread, and said, take it. This is my body which is given to you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, and gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And now with the confidence of children of God, let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The table of the Lord is an open table. And he, we see all people. It doesn't matter what's your age, what's your religion. We see all people and we ask all people to come and partake. This is having communion with God and communion with each other because of some problems, we now have uh, individual cups with grapes and we have one cup with apple juice because there's somebody here who does not take grapes but there's an apple juice so that she can partake because it's her birthday. Friends, all are welcome, and we will ask Dan to play while we come forward and take the cup that Jesus has given us in remembrance of Jesus' death, giving his body and his life for all of us.
go and make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. And lo, God is always with you. Amen. I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Amen. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Amen.
This is the confidence that we have in Jesus Christ that whosoever comes to him and ask forgiveness he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness amen go in peace This is the mystery of the Holy Communion, that in the breaking of the bread, we become whole, that in the death of Jesus the Christ, we have life eternal. Amen. There's a great good accomplished through our gifts of tithes and offerings. So today as we give, let's thank God, our provider, who multiplies our gifts to assist and serve others beyond what we can ask or even imagine. Please join me in the offertory prayer. God of love, we offer you our gifts and energy to help our church and people of the world who are hurting. 
Pour out your blessings on these gifts and help us to remember to be thankful as we pray in your name. Jesus, amen. Please remain standing if you are able for our closing hymn, I Love to Tell the Story, found the United Methodist Hymnal 156.
us pray. Lord, we want to tell your story in our lives. Thank you for being with us. Thank you, Lord, for all the strength. Thank you for the gift of family and the gift of community. Remind us always how faith in the risen Christ can transform our lives for the better. Stretch out your hands and raise us up from doubt, from denial, from hatred and fighting. Fill us with the strength of your spirit so that we may rise strong. May our journey as a resurrection people bring light to the world. And Lord, we ask your benediction to rest upon us this day. Place your left hand on your heart and your right hand in the hand of God. Go now into the world inspired by the extravagant love of God. Be a resurrection people who transform the world. Be people who does not just talk the talk, but walk the walk. Do no harm, do good, and stay in love with God. And now to him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we could ever ask or imagine, to him be the glory, honor, and praises. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
The peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Let us continue serving God and fellowship downstairs. Happy birthday, Miss Tony!